Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the tax agency funds or specifically agency funds, but I'm going to be using the tax agency fund as an example. This is part of the fiduciary funds in which we talked about uh, fiduciary funds in the prior session. By all means, go to this session to get an overview about fiduciary funds. So specifically, we're going to be looking at agency funds in this example. And I'll always like to give the same example to illustrate this point. I like Wawa, I like Door Coffee. So when I am in my town, so I, when I am in my town, sometimes they have a cup, the Wawa cup of coffee for 99 cent. Then I have to pay plus six pennies for the state. So I end up paying 105 for a cup of coffee in my town. When I go to the city of Philadelphia, I pay 99 cent, then I pay point zero eight. I end up paying one dollar and seven pennies. Well, why do I pay a different amount in the city of Philadelphia? Here's why. The I have to pay point zero six for the state. So for the state, I have to pay I have to pay six percent. In the city of Philadelphia, I still have to pay the state point zero six plus I pay two pennies for the city of Philadelphia. Therefore, I end up paying eight pennies overall. Now, how does that work? The state of Pennsylvania, they would receive eight pennies. Then they will have to give back to the city of Philadelphia two pennies, so they will keep six pennies. So those two pennies that the state of, uh, the state of Pennsylvania keeps, they keep those two pennies in an agency fund because that's not really their money. And this is what we are dealing with here. That's the tax agency fund. So the state is holding the money on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. So hopefully you guys get the point. This is the overall picture of what we are saying. What is a tax agency fund? Okay. So a tax agency fund is one when you have property taxes. It could be an example supported. Um, when you have property taxes supporting government in overlapping geographical areas, one unit typically agrees to do all the tax collection and remit the appropriate amount to the other unit. So here's how it works. Let's assume we are dealing with a county. This is another example. This is the county. And the county might have townships, villages, school district, other governmental units. So those are different governmental units. So here's what happened. The county collect all the taxes. So one person in the county on, or one division collect the taxes from everyone for all sorts of taxes. So this could be a township. This could be a village. This could be a school district. So what they do, the county collect all the taxes. Then, after they collect the taxes, then they distribute the taxes back to the various governmental unit. Why? Because the county basically considered it has a ge um, uh, overlapping geographical uh, control over all the other units. So when they collect their taxes, they collect the taxes for the school district, they collect the taxes for the village, they collect the taxes for everybody else. So it's an overlapping issue. So that's why they collect the money, then they give it to the other government. So this is another example. Okay. For example, could be also sales taxes are generally, generally collected by the state government. That portion belonging to the cities and the counties is recorded as an agency fund until the payment is made by the local government. And this is what I was doing when I showed you the Wawa example. You have to know a few things about fiduciary funds and, and, the, and the relationship with the government-wide financial statement. This is important. Fiduciary funds are not part of the government-wide financial statement, and we talked about this in the prior session, because the resources are not available for the general use, because it's not the, that's not the government money that belongs to somebody else. There are they are reported at the fund level only. So the so the uh, uh, agency, uh, the fiduciary funds are only reported at the fund level. And this is a, this is a good illustration. Basically, those are those are the fiduciary funds. Notice they are separate from the government-wide financial statement. So this is the government-wide financial statement. The fiduciary funds are reported separately. So hopefully you understand this. They are not consolidated. They are not consolidated with the government-wide financial statement. They are listed separately. Remember the accounting equation, assets equal to liabilities, and they have no expenses and no revenues. And there is no net position if you have, if assets equal to liabilities, you have no net position, no net fund, no equity, nothing like this. So closing entries are not necessary for an agency fund because you don't have revenues, you don't have expenses. Okay. Also an overview of the uh, financial statement for the agency funds. 
Agency assets and liabilities will be included in the statements of fiduciary net position. Okay, that's fine. There are no revenues, no expenses, so agency funds do not appear in the statement of do not appear in the statement of changes in fiduciary net positions. You don't have such a thing as statement of changes because you have no revenues and expenses. Basically, I'm telling I'm telling you the same thing in a different way. So hopefully you all understand this. And at the end, I will show you um, a financial statement, which is statement of fiduciary net position. It's only what basically like a balance sheet. Assets equal liabilities. That's it. Nothing, nothing else. Okay. However, combining statement of changes in assets and liabilities uh, for agency funds allow users to say the activity for the year. So we do can combine the statement of changes in assets and liabilities. So all of them, we, we can show the changes, what happened at the beginning of the year, and we'll see that later on. Uh, what's the beginning? What are the additions? What are the subtraction? And what's the ending? So we'll show, you will show this just to see what happened, but it's not it's not like a revenue or expense activities okay now let's take a look at an example to see how it works and at the end we'll see an actual statement um, so what could be some additional examples as we said state government commonly collect sales tax gasoline and many other taxes that are apportioned between state agencies and local government also the state can collect those taxes at the local level it's common for an elected official to serve as a collector for all property taxes as i just showed you earlier then they will distribute that money to the various district. A third example could be property taxes levied by the varying units within the county are paid to a single office within the county, then the county collector that make periodic payment to the appropriate government. Basically the same thing. Okay, and let's work actual examples with journal entries. So let's assume the county government levies on it for its general fund the amount of $2 million in property taxes, from which it's expected to realize one point. 1960000 So that's the county for itself. So there's county taxes and you have to pay the county taxes. But here's what happened in this county. Also, the county levies $3 million in property taxes for the school district. So here's what happened. That county, there is, if you live in that county, you have to pay county taxes, school district taxes, and sometimes in certain villages, you have to pay village taxes. So the county imposed their $2 million, then they send you a bill for the school district for $3 million, but that's not really the county taxes, that's the school district taxes, but the county is collecting them. And they send you a bill for $1 million in property taxes for the village. So they do collect, in addition to their taxes, they collect the school district and they collect the village taxes. Okay, so let's see what journal entries do we make. So here's the first journal entry that's made in the general fund. So in the general fund, the county will debit taxes receivable for their, that's their money. They will credit estimated in collectible 40,000 and their expected revenue from property taxes to be 1,960. So this happens in the general fund, in the general fund. Now, remember the school district and the village are separate entities than the county. Therefore, what's gonna happen, we have to, to account for those receivables in a separate fund, which is the agency fund. Because the school district and the village are separate government entity, the county account for tax collected for those government and a tax agency fund. So now, now we're gonna do the first entry for the tax agency fund. Well, we expect three plus one, four million, therefore we debit taxes receivable for other government, which is receivable, four million. Then we credit due to other government a liability of four million. So basically we debited an asset, of 4 million credited a liability for 4 million. And notice we, for the other agencies, we debit the gross amount. We we try to attempt to collect the full amount. Okay, although for for our taxes, we only um, expect 1,960,000 1, as far as the agency will try to collect the gross amount, the full amount. Okay, so notice we debited an asset, we credit a, credited a liability. That's all what's on the balance sheet, assets and liabilities. Now we're going to start to collect some money. Let's assume collection of taxes during a certain period for the year amounted 2.4 million for the other government, which is the school and the village, and 1.8 million for the county. So let's go ahead and record first the 2.4 million. The 2.4 million is going to be collected in the tax agency fund. We're going to debit cash, 2.4 million, credit Taxes receivable for other government, 2.4 million. So we increased an asset and we reduced an asset. So we debited cash, which is an asset, and we credited an asset. So basically, we still have assets equal to liabilities because you know we did not change anything else. 
For the general fund, we're going to debit cash 1.8 million, credit receivable 1.8 million. This is for, for the general fund because we collected 1.8 million on our behalf. Now, let's assume that the county, the general fund, uh, is giving 1% of all collection for other government as reimbursement for their cost. So what happened, the village and the school district, they give us 1% of what we collect for them. So why? Because this is part of our expenditure, they want to reimburse us. So here's what happened. For the 2.4 million, we're going to assume 600,000 was for the school district, I'm sorry, uh, for the village, and 1.8 million for the school district. So times 1%, we're going to get 6,000 from the village, we expect to receive 6,000 from the village and 18,000 from the school district. Why? As part of our effort. Therefore, we expect to receive $24,000. $24, so let's go ahead and book the entry once we are ready to, uh, once, once we are ready to uh, uh, start to transfer the money from the agency fund. So here's what's going to happen. We have 2.4 million, remember, we, we have 2.4 million due to other governments as a liability, then we're going to debit the liability in the tax agency fund. We're going to, this is a liability. We're going to debit the liability, okay, the 2.4 million, and credit due to the due to general fund, the 24,000. So the, the tax agency fund owes the general fund 24,000. Why? Because for their effort, due to the village, the village will get 596,000. So we have to credit, we have to credit due to village and we have to credit due to the school district 1,782,000. Now obviously once we cut the check, once we cut the check, we're going to debit those two to those are liabilities. So we debited the liability and we credited various liabilities, okay? Then once we send the money to the general fund, once we send money to the village, we're going to obviously debit those due to and credit cash. Okay? Once we send the money. But this is basically now we are recording uh, breaking down the uh, the liabilities okay now the general fund what would they would do because they expect to to earn 24000 they will debit a receivable due from county tax agency fund they will debit a receivable for 24000 and they will credit revenue for 24000 what's that revenue for the revenue for their effort of their effort for collecting the for the for their effort for collecting the taxes so this is the gen the the entry that the general fund makes now you might be saying will there be an expenditure yes there will be an expenditure but that expenditure will be in the general fund of the village so the general fund of the village will have a six thousand dollar expenditure and the general fund for the school district will have an eighteen thousand dollar expenditure so the expenditure is recorded not on the tax agency fund the expenditure is recorded in the general fund of the village and the general fund of the school district because you're saying you know if the general fund is recording revenue where's the expenditure the expenditure in the general fund of the other governmental unit and this is basically uh, a combining statement of changes in assets and liabilities so this is basically uh, we have uh, the property tax this is more than one fund balance so this is the property tax collection this is one fund so notice we have assets and we have liabilities. We have cash. We have the beginning of cash, 90,000. Addition, 3.9 million. Deduction, 3,750. And the ending cash is 240,000. Notice we show the beginning, the addition, the subtraction, and the, the addition, the deduction, and the ending balance. Same thing for the receivable. Then same thing for the liabilities due to the school district, due to the town. The same thing we'll do for the other fund, special assessment collection. This is another fund. And now we could put the total of all agency funds. And this is the total of all agency funds. This is the asset. And obviously, you can't see the liabilities, but we add up all the liabilities. So we show the beginning of each fund, the beginning balance of each fund, the addition of each fund, the deduction for each fund, and the ending balance for each fund. Okay. Then we can combine them all in one fund just to show the overall picture. But notice we're only showing assets and liabilities. No revenues, no expenditure. So addition and deduction, they are not revenues and expenditure. Those are changes in the fund, in the fund, in the agency fund. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard.